Okay, let me uh, take that off. So is everyone hearing me and seeing me okay? If you can let me know in the chat. Welcome. Sorry for the, the time mix up. Poor Jim. I think I gave him a heart attack when I said, are you ready in 20 minutes? <laughs> so I see people queuing up. So yeah, I, um, I have a lot of things going on right now. I'm actually literally in the moment closing on a house uh, that we owned in New Jersey. We finally sold it. I've been in Florida for three years. So um, <laughs> multitasking at its best. So Oh, thanks, Jake. Yeah, not a haircut. Very bad hair day, as a matter of fact. And uh, I'm growing my hair out. So we'll we'll see what the end result is. I'm not that that creative. So um, thank you, everyone, for for joining us. It's it's been a while since we've done an interview. And I had a mutual friend uh, who likes to be anonymous still because he's uh, still a PMO, asked if um, you know the people that he knew would want to interview Jim. I said, yes, I know Jim. I attended his Bible study before. And um, so Elaine got to him before me from uh, JW Escape. So hi, Elaine, if you're watching. And um, so this is kind of like a part two. There'll be some overlap, but I, I still think it's worth doing. And because this is a, a live um, stream, streaming live, your questions will change the whole whole energy of the, the interview. So any questions that you have for Jim, hopefully some of you have read his um, bio that he put on Berean Pickets or watched the video with um, Elaine from JW Escape. So I'm going to bring Jim on and um, start firing some questions at him. Let's see the video with, um, there you go, Elaine from JW Escape. So I'm going to bring Jim, Jim on. Jim, you might have to mute your... Um, questions, Adam, your, uh, or turn, turn it off. <laughs> Can you, you escape? So I'm going to, yeah, I'm getting a bit of feedback. You have to mute your, um, questions, Adam, your, uh, or turn it off. you can right click on the tab and mute the tab normally. Cause otherwise we're going to get feedback. <laughs> I think we'll have to go with, with the, um, no, it's the, it's the, you have the YouTube playing. Oh, otherwise really? we're going to get feedback. <laughs> I think we'll have to go with, with the... Uh... Okay, sorry. No, it's the, it's the, you have the YouTube playing. Oh, Otherwise, really? we're going to get feedback. I think we'll have to go with, with the... Uh... Okay, are we all right now? Yes, yeah. Can you hear okay. me? Let, yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, let me, good. Let me plug myself back in. Sorry okay. <laughs> so while Jim's doing that, uh, um, well, I'll just let you guys... Me know how I met Jim when I um, first came out and from the, the witnesses, it was, um, let's see, two years ago, August. So two and a half years, I can, I can say now. And I started to go to all the various uh, XJW Bible studies and I attended Jim's for a while. And um, at some point I, I just, I couldn't go to as many as I was going to. So unfortunately that, that time frame on Fridays, I, I ended up dropping, but um, they're a lovely group of people and Jim has a wonderful demeanor and he was gracious enough to share his devotionals with us and allowed me to put it up on um, my simplychristian.faith website. And a lot of people enjoyed that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that space for, for grace. So Jim uh, was a Jehovah's Witness for 60 years, an elder for 40, a pioneer for 30, and got disfellowshipped for talking about Jesus too much. Is that a good synopsis? That'll do it. Okay. Yep, that's a good synopsis. Great. So um, I kind of have like a little, little flow of going through the questions so people can kind of get to know you, but we can go through it a little bit quicker since you covered a lot of this on Elaine's yeah. and maybe get to the questions that hopefully our viewers will have because your main driving purpose is you like to help people. You want to really help people have a relationship with, with Jesus, right? Would you say that's your driving purpose? <laughs> um you're summarizing things so well i don't need to speak <laughs> <laughs> no we want you to speak no oh, okay yeah sure that is the purpose i've held back for four years from doing live interviews mm. and now now i just feel when i was prompted to do so by our mutual friend um i felt at first oh no way but then i think things are in place and i'm in a good place and i think the spirit's 
prompting this. So yes. yeah, thank you very, very much for having me on. Yeah, I was born in 1951, so you can compute that if it, to your heart's content. Four years ago, I was uh, disfellowshipped and basically for apostasy, talking too much about Jesus. Um, so uh, I was only one of many. There was a, like a whole page, it became known as, uh, in which uh, three elders were disfellowshipped, all born again, incidentally, and um, in three local congregations, a total of five elders faded, an additional five in a, a space of a year, 18 months. So amazing, really. Um, so it's done from not a position of hatred, but I was just thinking about this. Um, is there anger, not hatred, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if I might just look at the scripture, okay. It's, um, I've sure. got J.B. JB Phillips, Ma Mark chapter 3. And although there may be some who are not Christians here, um, people generally respect Christ. And this is where he had uh, before him the man with the withered, deformed hand. And he asked the man, uh, of course, the, the Pharisees were watching him as the legalists. And he said, um, Jesus, deeply hurt as he sensed their inhumanity, looked around in anger at the faces surrounding him and said to the men, man, stretch out your hand. Then it says, from that time on, they discussed with Herod's party how they could get rid of Jesus, who was violating one of their multiple additional law, Sabbath laws. So there was indignation, the Greek word orge, there was like anger, not hatred, but an anger. And I feel anger for the way that many of my friends and many PMOs have been handled and disfellowship ones have been yeah. handled. So is that... Uh, not hatred for the individuals, but anger at the um, way they've been trekked. So if that that sort of describes where I am. Um, okay, so it's not so much how bad the Watchtower organization is, although we can go there and look backwards, and it should be done from time to time. It's how good the freedom of being a Christian is, a yes. real Christian, I mean. That's what we're dealing with the positive so i hope we can contrast the two and maybe spend more time on the positive than the negative side although like we, need, we need both the book of galatians paul was very frank about the the judaizers he mentioned there and he felt quite angry with them if you read the language but then he turned to christ and built them up in christ and christ's love and the grace and that's hopefully where I am. Okay. That's great. Now, I think people can detect from your accent, you're from what part oh, yeah. of the UK? Northeast of England, in Hull. Yeah, okay. in Hull, on the northeast, uh, the port here. So yeah, we, we, we were quite infamous uh, during the Hull Purge, but um, generally we're quite a backwater in uh, ge geographical location. Is that the same purge what they, they talked about at Bethel? Was that the same time? That's right. Oh, yeah. okay. I, mm. I thought you were talking about your own like mini purge that happened locally. I didn't realize it was. Oh, it spread out. It found oh. out from our congregation and local congregations into uh, places like um, Scarborough and other places around about. Yeah. Oh, I it was one, something it was, new. It, it was one circuit overseer whose um, remit was to... <laughs> Purge out all the apostates and any elders who having wayward negative thoughts about the wonderful faith and discreet slave, to use his words. I heard a rumor they might be doing that again soon. <laughs> uh, well, maybe. <laughs> I think there's a lot of PMOs lurking. Um, yeah. So normally I ask what your current JW status is, but you said you were disfellowshipped four mm. years ago. So yeah. um, how long were you, you were, you were in you said 60 years, so were you born in? Um, my parents were five when I became a witness. So I was actually- Your parents were five or you were five? <laughs> uh, I was five. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strange parents. No, um, <laughs> they. Uh, I was five years of age and they were Anglican Church of England and became witnesses. And then 
for the next 61 years, I was brought up and developed as a witness, uh, an elder when I was 23, and various responsibilities in the organization. I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm only an ordinary Joe elder, as was, you know. Uh, I had certain responsibilities which connected with me with Bethel, port witnessing in the Chinese ministry. But um, I didn't hobnob with any governing body members, but that doesn't matter. It's who you are and who you are to Christ and how you can help other people that matters. Uh, yeah. So I'm not bothered about titles or roles. Never meant anything to me. You wanted to serve. You have a servant's heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. What was like... When do you think you were starting to kind of wake up? What were the the things that, you know, before? I, it, it's like a process, I think, with everybody. It's yeah. not just one thing. So what was it for you? All right. Well, let's deal with the organizational bits first. Um, <laughs> I suppose that's what people are more interested in. Uh, to me, the more personal bit is to do with Jesus Christ. But let's go back to the organizational bit. The teachings, first of all, um, even as a young guy, I was always astounded by some of the strange teachings. I'll, I'll give you only one example because we could spend the whole evening talking about all, all day talking about it. Is the um, um, the seven trumpets of Revelation, mm -hmm. Revelation eight, and the bulls? You know, Revelation sixteen, um, meaning the seven beginning with the seven conventions from nineteen twenty two to nineteen twenty eight starting at Cedar Point, Ohio, I always used to think, um, how can that be? How, this little bunch of people, okay, they, meant, they multiplied the, the pamphlets into the millions, but it was just a, a dribble, basically. And they said, we fulfill that Bible prophecy. And I always could never accept that. But I never said that to anyone. I just, it was cognitive dissonance again. Mm -hmm. um, Regarding the preaching, that was a bigger influence um, in my gradual wake up, I guess. So if you can understand this, well, you will. You kept busy, busy, busy. Yeah. The treadmill of activity. Um, for example, you know, yeah, I attended three pioneer schools in my sort of um, I'm say theocratic career, but it's mainly untheocratic career. But and and the circuit overseers meetings, the uh, circuit assembly pioneer meetings, each one was telling you to get your quota of hours, which was originally 1,200. They were spent so long telling you to get your time in that you had no time to get your time in. <laughs> um, it, it's true. You know, when the circuit overseas visit came, you were struggling to cap make your time count. You know, it was just uh, gobbled away. Um, but regarding the, it wasn't just the busyness uh, in which it, it became wearisome. I enjoyed the relationship with people I developed, but the actual grind of time and clock watching was wearisome. It creates a, an ongoing tension. You wake up in the morning, how can I start my time? Last mm -hmm. thing at, at night, can I, I sneak in another return visit? You know, it was all of that. Um, yeah. It's a terrible way to conduct one's life, particularly as I did that for 40 years uh, in the pioneer ministry. Um, uh, sorry, 30 years in the pioneer ministry. So, um, but what used to get to me as well is what about the message? And I used to read, okay, got new old translation here. I read this scripture to um, the body of elders on one occasion. I had three meetings with a body of elders in the year before I was disfellowshipped. And um, I, I opened the new old translation and, and read Colossians 1 verse 27 to them. God has been pleased to make known among the nations the glorious riches of this sacred secret, which is Christ. In, in union with you, or in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we are proclaiming, admonishing every, everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom that they may, may be complete in union with Christ. And you know, there's so many verses. Um, I'm just flipping over to Second Timothy, First uh, Timothy two, which we all know. Um, For there is one God and one mediator between God and uh, man, a man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. This is what is to be witnessed to at its own due time. Well, I could never make sense of that. A, 
the mediator was only for about 1% of JWs. And secondly, it's mm. a corresponding ransom for all. It's the ransom that should be the message, is, is death, the burial, resurrection, is ascension, and the grace he pours out by Holy Spirit. That's the message. So when I was working by myself over the years, I used to more focus on Jesus Christ. When I was working with a witness, I've, I've toned it down somewhat. <laughs> um, but so the, the also the other thing about the preaching work, um, if I'm rambling on, just stop me. No, no, you're good. <laughs> okay. Um, was how Matthew 24, 14 um, preached the good news, all the nations. And they used to pride themselves that we're reaching all the nations. <laughs> Yet the real fact is that between two and three billion people of Earth's population never heard the good news, never heard of Jehovah's Witnesses. And what's more, uh, over 300,000 are born every day due to die Armageddon. So they boast of 300,000 perhaps in a year that they're baptized. In the peak years, it doesn't happen now. It's dropped right down. But they, that figure is born every day. And so the, by the time Armageddon comes, more and more are being born to be destroyed from their viewpoint. And then, of course, you've got the idea of reporting, uh, which never made sense to me, a reporting field service activity. I'm trying to imagine the Apostle Paul looking for the box to put his reporting in Antioch or somewhere. It's ridiculous. So um, those facts about the teaching and the preaching, if we, if we pursue it a little bit further, the elder body itself, um, it used to be quite a bit of politicking and cronyism um, was happening. And sometimes you're in the middle of a body of elders meeting, almost standing between elders, keeping them verbally apart, trying mm. to turn things down a bit. Uh, also trying to um, get people on their side to vote for their policy or who should be recommended as an elder. Uh, that went on quite frequently. Then the circuit overseer came. I'm just rattling these one after one after the other. They were all cognitive dissonance, but they're all making an impact. Um, circuit overseer's visit. He was, uh, how can I put it, um, prepared for. They had the sheet uh, S61 here. It was a sorry questionnaire, double-sided, of 30 questions. Right. The poor old secretary, our service overseer for most of my career, List of, list of those scheduled to receive a shepherding visit, um, all the congregation accounts of today, contact inf information of all publishers, movements of all literature, um, notification of all disfellowshipping, disaster preparedness, uh, skills uh, sheets up to date. So it was endless. And yet the, the circuit overseer, as we know, uh, is sort of um, adulation and adoration, the buzz. And yet... Um, he was just an ordinary guy, just a policy man, uh, which is very sad. Mm -hmm. The One of the circuit overseers, I just must mention this, um, this really was a trigger more than most. I, I wrote the, the branch on about four particular occasions. Um, it was always in behalf of others, really. But one of the occasions was um, this particular circuit overseer he was known locally as a sergeant major and um <laughs> i don't know whether it reached his ears but nevertheless he um he'd just come back from a uh, circuit overseas training school a seminar and i believe it was about 2005 um what was the bible teach book course had come out and he was all um fired up on the correct way to conduct Bible studies. Now, I'd been to the Pioneer meeting recently, a few months prior, and it said, when conducting Bible studies, tailor them according to the congregation, the, the household's need. Um, not necessary to read every paragraph, every scripture. He comes along and he is assigned to work with a few sisters as his wife is. So, I had four sisters separately, unbeknownst to each other, as far as I know, come up to me at service overseer. I said, I don't want to work with him again. And they were in tears. Three of wow. them were in tears. I said, what's gone wrong? He said, 
you were conducting a, the Bible study incorrectly, sister. You should be reading every paragraph and every scripture. So I confronted him on behalf of these sisters and said, well, hold on, brother. Um, do you think I, at the Pioneer School it said the opposite? Well, I've just been to this course, this seminar. Okay. I left it and I wrote to the branch saying, I'm confused. And the pioneers would be confused in the UK that attended that pioneer school. So sort of credit to the to the branch. They wrote every circuit overseer and pioneer school instructor saying, tone it down a bit. <laughs> we would prefer everything to be read, but it has to be according to the householder's need. It was a compromise they made. Mm -hmm. But yeah. He wouldn't have it, and I was never used on circuit assemblies again until he left. Um, another case, another thing that triggered me was disfellowshipping. Now, I'm talking about the bad stuff, not the good stuff yet, but um, there was a, another anecdote I can just relate. A couple that I was in a judicial committee, and it was going back to the uh, mid-70s, 73, 71, 72, 73, that era, uh, when smoking was made, first made a disfellowship mm -hmm. offence. So we're given six months to mend the ways, repent and stop. This um, young lady, um, married with um, two children at the time, young children, she was under a lot of stress from work, etc. various health issues as well. And she confessed smoking. She was seen and, she, you know, it was reported to the elders as good witnesses report every misdemeanor. So she, um, we confronted her and um, they wanted to disfellowship her. And I said, well, look, please give her longer. Um, oh, we'll give her a concession of an extra two weeks. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll go with that. So we relayed that back to the sister, two weeks she had reconvened have you smoked once in those two weeks i caved in two days ago i believe it was once this fellowship of wow well, this that wasn't the end of it because um about a month later i got this letter through the post and it said dear brother fielder uh, and this is written from her husband and she he was saying the stress that she was under now disfellowshipped she felt suicidal mm. she felt as though life wasn't worth living now she survived that time but no thanks to me or to the committee or to the elders or to the organizational straconian policies um but i saved that letter for decades i kept it in my private file I read it to the elders, the body of elders, it made no difference to them. Um, they wouldn't take note. There's like very little compassion, only compassion to speak it, but not in action. But that made an impact on me so much so that um, when you had to read 5A, 5B, 5C of the Shepherd of the Flock of God book, if you're preparing to enter into a judi judicial committee arena, I had that letter at the back of the book, and it was a a physical reminder to be merciful, you know. Um, so the crunch came organizationally in 2012. And this was a turning point away from the organization for me was when the governing body asserted that they were the faithful slave. Them alone, um, sort of, yeah, like an uh, egregious um, autocracy gone mad, you know, authority. <laughs> And it was, I just thought this, the danger, the alarm bells were clanging away. I'm thinking, no way, that means that everything will become more um, confined mm. and outlined. So, and at this point, had you done any like online oh, no. research or? Not at all. I didn't. Not yet. I, I never uh, confronted an apostate or. Um, read any been online so let me just give a quick story um i'm full of stories so <laughs> you try and stop me um so i wrote this port, port witnessing guidelines for the branch and 
uh, in 2005. But what they had was a policy that when you went up the gangway and signed in, you could not write that you were a JW. You could not write that you represented the local congregation. You had to just write your own name in your own right. And there was no identification. You would not put JW, I am a J, you would not, you would say, oh, we're doing a Christian missionary work. When you got into the mess room, perhaps you could loosen up and say you were a Jehovah's Witness, but you could certainly not. And I thought, what's going on here? And it was basically the fact that they didn't want any indemnity in case you had an accident on board. Oh, so, wow. And so I got a complaint from the local uh, apost uh, apostleship of the sea and uh, mission to seafarers uh, and the local associated British ports saying, um, when you go in on a gang up a gangway onto the deck, they assume that you are either customs or represent a mission. Can you please identify yourself? So I wrote to the branch and I've got, I, I saved the letter on the back here. Um, a further issue often arises of identification. Some pass passes issued by the docks do not clearly or obviously state who we represent. And so confusion arises as a vessel is boarded because the officer on watch initially mistakes us for customs officials or, or church mission workers. Are we all right? Okay, I'll, I'll plow on. And... Um, it would be helpful to have some clear form of badge identification, perhaps one as a lapel card, stating that we are a port missionary of Jehovah's Witnesses. If this becomes common practice in all ports worldwide, we would easily be identified and differentiated from all of the callers. That's better. So, um, the, de the desk, the service desk rang me and said, look, Jim, we appreciate that, but we can't do it because we don't want to be that clearly identified in case we have to pay the financial costs of any um, <laughs> accident or something mishap on board ship. So our team, we got our heads together and on the helmets, we had JW in four languages, you know, Svidesli, Yegovis, Svatkovi, Yehovim, and so on, Saxi, Yehova, in four languages and on our jackets, on blazing on the back. And uh, so we identified ourselves locally as who we are um am i frozen because you are by the way okay i'm back oh you're Can back you... yeah okay That's i fine. guess i was on my end i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> so i was just praying just that minute so okay it's okay you were frozen with a lovely smile because oh, good. Good. i'm normally frozen with an ugly um <laughs> so um so moving to the positive side if i may um, yeah, of course. I'm not giving you any opportunity to talk here. So, no, this is for you to talk. I'm okay. just here to, to to guide and, you know, pull things out. We do have some questions from the audience when you want to take a little pause. Okay. Um, if you give me five minutes on this, at least. Sure. And then that yeah. will probably prompt other questions. Um, 2000, and I, I mentioned this in Elaine's uh, interview uh, to a degree, uh, the... 2011 to 12 were the crucial years for me spiritually all that i've described in the past 15 minutes or so was background interference uh cognitive dissonance going mad and particularly in 2012 when the governing body proclaimed but coincidental with that was i was awakened by christ now i'm not saying visions i'm not saying such as that but I was aware on more than one occasion of his presence in a real way. Um, yeah, okay, I better not talk too much about that because personally, it's private and I get a bit emotional about it, to be honest. It's okay. Uh, I, I visualize everything that happened and it becomes very much mo very moving for me. Um, but from that moment on, I knew that I was not just a friend of God, but a son of God. Mm -hmm and it affected prayers it affected my whole thinking it affected the joy that i felt i failed um what did it the catalyst um was reading sorry 
I'm so happy it's you and not me. Uh, <laughs> um, the catalyst was reading the book of Romans from the Message Bible from chapter one to eight, just reading it through. It, if you speed read, it can take 20 minutes. I think it took me an hour or maybe it's a couple of hours, but uh, that really got me. But And the Romans Road, check that out on Google, the Romans Road. But I am so sorry. That is my son who is 14 and he's doesn't remember that I'm mommy's doing a live stream. Okay. Keep going, Jim. <laughs> it's all right. Well, if he listens in, that'd be great. But um, what particularly helped was one scripture and this was the, the, the whole pivotal point. So if, if I just read it and it may, it may not help anyone else. I don't know, but it's first John chapter four, verse 16. And on a number of fronts, I was just reading through First John after reading that, those Romans chapters. And um, I'm reading from the NASB. Um, we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. Okay, point one. Um, I knew about God's love, but did I believe it for me? Ah, that was different. And this verse sort of started waking me up, but I read on God is love and the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. That was the second. Whoa. Same verse. God abides in me. Grace isn't just unmerited, undeserved, um, unpaid for from our part, uh, love and favor. It's God depositing himself in you by the Holy Spirit. Oh, well, well, that's another subject. Okay, so I'll move on. By this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of ju judgment. And it struck me as a JW that I was never confident in the day of judgment. You feared Armageddon and the great tribulation. You feared that God might judge you. If you died now, you would be mm, a goner. Um, well, that tied in with Romans 8.1, that uh, those in union with in Christ, so to say, those now in Christ have no condemnation. Um, you want to read that in the interlinear, it's a lot better. So, but this this fourth point now, sort of first John 4 17b, is the point that woke me up completely. It simply says, Because as he is, so also are we in this world. And I looked at that verse. I said, I'll get that, you know. I, I was starting to read the Bible and pray at the same time. So I, I argued with him. I'll get that, Lord. And I kept reading it again because I'd read it through watchtower eyes, just as Jesus was. So we should be in this world. And I thought, you know, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that just as Jesus was as our exemplar, we should walk in his footsteps. Yes, we should. But it didn't say that. That's other verses in Peter. This says, because that's as he is when john wrote this jesus was it back in heaven so jesus is is a beloved son of god uncondemned um totally righteous unconditionally loved totally joyous and so we are although we're in this world we're uncondemned righteous righteous as jesus is now that sounds strange righteous um not condemned anymore and it's almost i read that fourth part of those those two verses and the scales just fell away and i put the whole package of those verses together it was the key that unlocked everything now it might be different for everybody anyone else uh, undoubtedly it will be it but it's um that was what helped me and th then that led on to sort of the idea it is finished everything was done mm -hmm. i don't i can hop off the tre treadmill now it's done and that's that's basically when that's not me <laughs> that's not an alarm clock it was <laughs> that's okay it's, now it's my turn um so <laughs> well, it's interesting we're having it? fun we're not <laughs> trying to do some sort of professional <laughs> oh no no it's all the more fun um so that was a i i, I couldn't stop talking about jesus then do I blame the elders for saying I'm talking too much about Jesus? Not really, because that's a reality. I was. I mm -hmm. couldn't stop it. 
Uh, so I went around visiting about 100 different households in, in Hull and area. Um, not, not complaining against the governing body, I'm not talking about 1914 child sexual abuse, higher education and the whole catalogue, uh, but rather um, John 5, 24, that um, we have passed over from death to life and we're not under judgment anymore. That's and first John 4, of course. So that, that's like anti JW teaching. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It's the other way. So um, that's after that. Uh, I was completely monitored. Um, so mm. when I talked to a JW or I made a shepherding call, they would contact the person I talked to and say, what was Jim saying to you on the phone or mm. visiting or in the Kingdom Hall? Um, that became stressful. Yeah. And Did honestly, you feel what, limited when you had to give talks by the outlines? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you you're you a good teacher and I can tell you just want to, you know, mm. and I, I bet you felt very hamstrung by that. Yes. Um, the public talks, as you know, there's a selection of them. I, t uh, I tended to choose the ones um, on prayer, meditation, <laughs> uh, Bible. And Jesus. And, <laughs> and Jesus, of course. There's not, there's not many outlines on Jesus, I tell you. Um, but wow, that's also, telling right there. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's a couple of outlines. One goes through uh, Hebrews 3 and 4 and the other one through Proverbs 3. So I chose those. Um, uh, so that that was good but the other parts because you were service overseer you had to give talks on pioneering you give talks about the ministry all the time so you were looking for parts of the talk uh, sorry the outline which geared up the brothers to do more and i didn't really want to do that mm -hmm. it's a, as you say it created stress and i don't deny that it was a, a psychological stress for those two and a half years three years and I felt for my wife, who was also going through that related stress, she knew what was happening as well. So bless her. She was very supportive at that time. So then um, I remember meeting with the elders. I feel like a, in a court of law bringing evidence. Um, so <laughs> I think you're doing better than Jeffrey Jackson, though. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. OK. Uh, I said to the elders, I'm not sure if this was actually the committee meeting or not, but I quoted the 1986 Watchtower of May 15th, which said, in reference to H.G. Wells, H.G. Wells held that the spirit of Constantine dominated church affairs, and he observed the idea of stamping out all controversy and division, stamping out all thought by imposing one dogmatic creed upon all believers is the idea of the single-handed man who feels that to work at all he at all he must be free from opposition and criticism any who express differing opinions or even attempted to present scriptural proof refuting the dogmas and canons of the councils were branded as heretics so i said to the elders we want to want to be branded like that and labeled the same as that would we and there's another quote uh, as well, if I remember rightly. Awake 99, January 8th. Those daring to question the established orthodoxy, the monopoly of dogma, that's an interesting expression, were branded as heretics and tracked down in the witch hunt climate of the time. I thought, well, that's the, the whole <laughs> um, rooting out. So... Uh, they didn't particularly like that. They could see that it's a quotation from the Watchtower and Awake, but they didn't particularly like that. Mm. And the consolation, and then I'll stop, and now I've time for questions, was um, it, when I was disfellowshipped, um, basically there was no one around very much that you related to except those few that had been disfellowshipped. But then I had, had my how can i put this um i don't want to go into deep a deep dive with family i respect their privacy so yeah. i was aware of the family finding out all this going on you know uh, but what i found was um let me just use the new world translation again john 9 verse 35 that was going to be my next question before we went to the audiences do you have yeah loved ones in and how is that going currently okay i'll, I'll just come i'll add that on to this um <laughs> okay. 
So John Nairn is the man who was uh, thrown out of the synagogue, and that meant um, ostracization. He was um, shunned, basically. Hmm. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and on finding him, he said, are you putting faith in the Son of Man? Doesn't that say volumes? Here was Jesus finding someone who'd been thrown out of the true religion. It was viewed as a true religion with its governing right. body, the Sanhedrin, at the time. And um, Jesus found him. And the, he asked him the key question, do you believe in me? And I thought, really, that's great. And I could say, you found me, Lord, and I do believe in you. So I wasn't alone. And that has been a great comfort. Well, he is the greatest comfort. You know, uh, King Jesus is a great guy, you know. <laughs> so regarding the rest of the family, uh, oh, they're all, all JWs. Um, some are overseas. Um, circuit overseers, wife, regular pioneers, elders. Um, so, yeah, they're all um, JWs. And my wife, too, she's an ardent JW. I get the impression they've even stepped it up even more since I was thrown out because they've got support that, I guess, a compassion mm -hmm. toward them because they've got an apostate yep. husband, father, you know. I'm in the so, same boat. <laughs> yeah, well, you find it the same? It's difficult. Do you find it difficult at all or are you well, coping with that? my husband's still in and it's, mm -hmm. um, but we, I, I'm very proud of how he and I are making things work out but i think he's yeah. um a unique case i i i've heard the opposite where you know some marriages it's it's super super tough so i i guess it just depends on you know where you're at in the stage of life and everything so yeah well um we've we've passed our 50th wedding anniversary so i don't suppose we're congratulations going yeah well that's a bit a while ago but um yeah it's um she's just a lovely person so and we can get by this mm -hmm. hindrance this block yeah this faith block if you like and it's never mentioned and i'm not going to push it um things pop out now and again involuntarily as you're watching tv etc but yeah um I just but it's not it like you got disfellowshipped for you know infidelity or doing no. drugs or you know like a gross no. what i consider a gross sin and you're you're just this uber spiritual person and you love Jesus. And like, how can you be like, you know, like view that as equal to those other things. Whereas they make that charge, I would say the worst of all of them. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so, so true. Yeah. And they get very uptight. If somebody celebrates Christmas or birthdays or anything like that, they will be very uptight about it. That's immediately apostate. Yeah. But that's how it goes. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're ready for some questions. I'll try my best. Okay. I think you'll love these. Um, and if, for the rest of you who are watching, I think we got a good 30 people on. Any questions you have for Jim? All right. I'm going to go in order. So the first one, let me see, is from Jake. And he said, what sort of questions are good to use on JWs to maybe start them thinking? So I guess he's probably got some loved ones in and. So I wrote this tract. Um, oh, okay. 20 questions to ask Jehovah's Witnesses. And they, re they relate to um, salvation questions, organizational questions and New World Translation questions. So um, I don't know whether it's worthwhile going through any of these. It probably take too long. The, number one on salvation, I'll give you an example. And this is from a Christian angle. How would I benefit by becoming a witness? As a Christian, I already possess a relationship with Christ, forgiveness of all my sins, his righteousness, sonship, and eternal life. So what have you got to offer me? Um, all I can offer you is probably you will live to see a thousand-year test and another test after it. You know, mm. there's nothing, nothing sure. Everything in the witness world is uncertain they're uncertain about forgiveness eternal life and their performance so um another one uh, uh the, the first one under organization 
why did Jesus write to seven individual churches in Revelation 2 and 3 rather than any supposed central governing body? Hmm, interesting. And the first question under New World Translation, John 3.16, why does the New World Translation here says, ex say exercising faith when in the previous verse, verse 15, the same Greek word, pistuon, is translated simply as believing? Uh, and then it is faith, not the works of faith hmm. that save a person. Okay, so that gives you a, a gist of that sort of thing. Um, if anybody wants them, I can send the PDF along. Or if they live in the UK, I don't mind sending a, a few copies. Do you have that them. online anywhere? Um, I thought I sent it to you, actually, but maybe I didn't. Maybe it was Elaine I sent it to. Um, okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll get that link from you, and I'll put it in the show notes, and people can come back and... Yeah, underneath you, the YouTube description, I got links to your books and things like that. We'll add that. I just remembered where it is, um, <laughs> Laurie. It's um, I can send the PDF. Just send me an email and okay. you give the email. I don't. I, I love talking to people and so on. Um, the um, read JW dot info. Now that's a website. And oh, this okay, is, yeah. This is all credit to our mutual friend. Yes. And I piled, I piled in a lot of information. It's not exclusively mine. No, it, there's other brothers that are involved in that. But uh, a lot of it is stuff I've put there. And right at the end, there's a PDF of that leaflet. Okay. I put the link in the chat. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Next question. What do you think? This is from Adiva. What do you think in your character attracted you and led you to the JW faith? Well, you were five, so I was five. No yeah. <laughs> I had no choice. Uh, you were steamrolled. In fact, this is this is the fact. You, it became part of your life. Pioneering became part of your blood, if you like. It was in your blood, in the sense that you couldn't think of stopping. Uh, you knew no, nothing else. It it was habitual. <laughs> ah, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Just as well you don't have six 14-year-olds, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think it, yeah, the answer to that is just uh, as you implied, that I, I was no, no choice. You were dragged to meetings. And, I, you know, I remember just um, one winter's morning, a Saturday morning, working with my mother. I was six years of age. And we, she was talking to this lady. I was frozen, disinterested for about an hour and a half and the wind was blowing and i thought what's she talking about um it was all repetitive cycle bless her you know my mum was so devout you know um but i thought to myself then and then when i had our four children and they reached the age of six i could flip back and see what they were possibly going through mm. So when working with them, I tried to keep it brief and to the point and try to involve them to a degree. But I was still taking them down the, down the wrong treadmill road. But yeah. anyway, there, there's the well, answer. I think if, if we reworded this question a bit, maybe what about the faith did you like while you oh. were in it? Oh, I see. You could read it the way around. Yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> that makes it uh, interesting. Um, hmm. Because you loved people, and you, yeah. you you did seem to really like the um, port witnessing. Oh, yeah, true, which I've, I resume doing under a different guise as Mission to Seafarers now, which I love. Great. So, and, uh, you know, working with a great colleague, uh, Steve, this morning, uh, so we enjoyed ourselves very much, and the, and the coffee was very good, Steve, too. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, we, um, <laughs> yeah, it was the activity because you feel you were engrossed with people's concern and that was good also the fact that you were involved in trying to understand scripture but the scriptures that i was looking at sort of 60s uh, 70s um there was some meat on the bones and now it's so dumbed down yeah. really i talked to my son-in-law when he was over here a few years ago before just before his fellowship and said um i just have a question for you you know that the faith and discreet slave 
um, are the sort of the governing body, so it said, right? I said, so there's all the other of the remnant, a growing number who claim to be of the remnant. Um, who feeds them? Mm. Um, I can understand, you see, the, the argument is that it has to be dumbed down to reach all educational levels, for the, particularly for the other great crowd of other sheep, which is a misnomer anyway. But anyway, but who feeds the spiritual food for heaven or for life with Jesus that they should receive? There's nothing. And that's what used to get me at the memorial time. It was all about paradise earth and being a good boy or girl to get there and don't drink and eat. Um, but there was no spiritual food saying this is what heaven will be like or the life with Jesus will be like for those who are partaking. It was nothing. Uh, crumbs well even the crumbs were junk food so um <laughs> um it, you know that that really got to me but the involvement with people and the attempt in the early days of um exp <laughs> explaining the bible uh um was, was was beneficial i think and the camaraderie you had and there were good times of course there were good times there were good people and sincere people and i love and that's why i can't go to hatred so the next question is from Jake again. Even though you've sacrificed a lot being shunned by family, do you have any regrets in making a stand for Jesus? <laughs> okay, Jake, I know who you are. Um, <laughs> um, very good. And the answer is... Is that our mutual friend? Oh, you said it. <laughs> okay. And um, so no regrets at all. And um, in fact... The more you stand up for Jesus, the more he comes supporting you. And the more, this is why, you know, 160 times Paul wrote about being in Jesus and Jesus in you. Once you have that awareness of this beauty of who he is and you stand up for him, can you imagine in heaven him looking down and the Holy Spirit in indwelling? how they're proud of their sons and daughters and they feel ostracized um oh can i can i read another scripture come to mind just make it good. it's of course so, <laughs> i know yeah psalm 69 um oh hang on a minute maybe that's the wrong one oh okay i'll, I'll just it, it this is a shorter one it's psalm 41 i was going to but psalm 69 message bible uh, verse 8 and 9 my brothers shun me like a bum off the street my family treats me like an unwanted guest i love you more than i can say because i'm madly in love with you they blame me for everything they dislike about you wow that's powerful isn't it and there's many verses like that it carries on in that um you know how they kick me around i'm a pin pin on me the donkey's ears the dunce's cap I looked in vain for one friendly face, not one. I couldn't find one shoulder to cry on. And that's why we're here, you know, Laurie. Um, they gossiped about me, about the one you disciplined, made up stories. Um, I'm hurt and in pain. Give me space for healing and mountain air. And then it finishes. I'm jumping around through the chapter. The poor in spirit see and are glad. Oh, you God seekers, take heart. So great, inspiring verses from the Holy Spirit. It's paraphrased, but it gets the sense that we go through the mill, we drag through a hedge backwards, but the Father and the Son are so proud, they're glad at heart, seeing one of their sons or daughters stand up and be counted. Be counted. Well, it says, rejoice and leap for joy. Or jump around like a lamb, one verse, verse says in Luke 6 and Matthew. Um, when you were counted worthy to be dishonored for his name, the name, not Jehovah, his name, the name of Jesus. Yeah. So that's a long answer, Jake. <laughs> that's a good no, don't, no, no regrets. And Shelley wants to know, how do you feel about the statement, mercy and not sacrifice? <laughs> um. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you agree. <laughs> yeah, I fully agree. Um, yeah, it's um, 
the the even the, the law system uh, of the mosaic law was a temporary arrangement to point to christ the sacrifices god didn't really want them not really everything operational about god is love and grace so the Abrahamic covenant was love and grace. That was, I mean, bless him, Abraham fell asleep in the middle of that covenant, right? Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't lift a finger to say, I'm involved in this covenant. God, God put him to a deep sleep, so he couldn't do anything. He couldn't, he couldn't waft off the beds and the ravens anymore. Um, so likewise, grace is, am I... Hmm, it's not what I do, it's what Jesus did. It's not am I achieving, it's am I receiving his grace, his love. Am I receiving his mercy? So when the law went, the sacrifices, which are basically in place just until Messiah came, and now we're back under grace, well, not back under, grace is reinforced or more evident. We're always under grace, but it became more evident, uh, John 1, 14, et cetera. So a uh, wave upon wave of grace, it says, uh, in one Bible. So it's, um, yeah, God did, did, wants mercy and sacrifice. Any, anything, when, once we've received that grace and so we stand up for Christ, anything that we do is him operating through us. Mm -hmm. uh, in Isaiah, it says, all our works are performed by him. Um, so the works come after we don't yeah. work to to get the no. love to get the forgiveness that comes because we're so grateful for it yeah um grace empowers so um we ephesians 2 8 to 10 say that we're not saved by works but we're saved to or for work right. so one is the root and the other is the fruit of the root and we're just in the middle it's the vine, isn't it? So the vine is Jesus. The Holy Spirit flows through like the sap. And all we do is hang there as fruit bearers. It, it doesn't say that you produce fruit. It just says that you may bear fruit. We're fruit hangers, basically. So all we do is what he is doing. We're transmitting Christ. We, 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 we're grace transmitters or Christ transmitters, really. Um, okay. That reminds me of when I was reading your story again on Berean Pickett's, how you were saying the one brother was like, if you keep teaching them about grace, they're going to not want to go out and service as, as much yeah. or something to that effect, right? So they're, they're so works-based and they're kind of going back to the old arrangement when we're supposed to be free of that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's very on. pharisaical. Like, I can't believe they can't see that about themselves when they have rules like women have to wear skirts, men can't have beards. Like, they're adding to, yeah. you know, um, scripture when they're not supposed to. <laughs> that argument, Laurie, was raised uh, in the year before, a couple of years before this fellowship and during the judicial. It's the same repeated argument, just what you said. If you live by the way you were saying, undeserved kindness, because I wouldn't call it grace, um, then people will, will have no control. Exactly. So we quoted Romans 6, 1 and Romans 6, verse 15, I think it is, to that, to that ilk, you know, that that's the very argument that was raised against Paul. In fact, how do you know that you're preaching the gospel right? It's when people say, you, well, then you're free to do as you like. If people mm -hmm. say that to you, you've got the message right. Because and yet here you were pioneering an elder and you yep. believe that. So you weren't slowing down in what you were doing. So it no. didn't really hold any water. Correct. Yeah. All right. Here's another good one. One of my favorite topics. Did you start partaking? I know the answer, but. Okay, uh, yes, 2015. Oh, that was quite an episode. Uh, it's got a, a funny side as well, but I'll pull back a bit because we'll be talking endlessly. Um, is there a time limit on this, Laurie? I, I had us going to 3.30, so. Okay, you know. right. Um, right, do you mean. Which is soon, another 30 or... minutes. I forgot oh, you're five hours ahead of me. <laughs> I thought you meant another 12 hours time. Anyway, um, so 2015. So in um, 2014, I guess I was sort of 
one with the Lord. 2015, I came to the came to memorial. The I was in the Chinese congregation, so um, it was my privilege to conduct it in a local hotel. We had about 38, 40 there, half Chinese, half were English learners who were the witnesses. And I had to give this talk in Chinese, right? So um, I did that, but I, I was emphasizing more about the <laughs> heavenly hope and the, the being with Jesus rather than the paradise earth. I skated over that, to be honest. But when it came to the partaking, I partook of the bread and the sister, the funny bit was the sister who had made the bread, knowing that no one ever partook, had made it like a rock. <laughs> and my wife said, you're not going to get your teeth through that. You know, she she only knew a few hours beforehand that I was going to partake. So she broke a bit off. But I didn't realize I was so near the microphone. I crunched down it and the, the crunch reverberated through the whole hall. There was no hiding the identity. Oh, identify. that's fantastic. But... Um, it, it, that's the funny side of it and then the, the, the wine there's more to that involved but i won't go down there it's very personal um there's only one or two people know what happened at that time so um yeah so after partaking it was i'll tell you what it was like the chinese group there the brothers and sisters were related when i got to back to the general kingdom hall with the mixing with the english on the sunday there was like almost a mm -hmm. hushed reverence because there was no other party. There was one elderly brother in the circuit, a lovely brother. Um, I admired him so much. And he, he, he left about that time to go elsewhere. So I was the only one in the circuit who actually partook publicly. Um, maybe others partook privately. But you know, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, it was hail, you know, the king. And then Perhaps it wasn't the same group, but a few days later, a crowd wanted to kill him. Yeah. And, and that's what happened, basically. 2015, they were all, hail this future king. <laughs> I didn't want the acclaim. I'd rather be out the limelight, as you probably register. I, I'd rather be out of the way. But you were sort of elevated, and, and then 2017, they threw you out on your ear. So... That's how it goes. I've forgotten the question now. Oh, yeah, did I pass I, I always wonder, like, with, you know, what was their reason for making us pass it? I mean, I know they felt the covenant was just between the anointed and Jesus. But even if you went to a wedding celebration, it's not just the wedding party that would partake. Everybody would partake in the celebration. So even they could have still allowed that to happen. It's just weird. Like I, I said in one of my last videos I did that I felt like it was um, a mass rejection of Christ. Mm -hmm. And one of the commenters thought that was a little harsh. So I don't know. But I felt that way when I finally learned that, you know, this was between me and Jesus, that I was supposed to be following him and he said do this in remembrance of me not pass it you know not be a passive observer so um i felt horrible when i first realized it i mean i know he he forgives me but um yeah i enjoy partaking now and and feel mm. um you know happy to do that it's a really good point i mean the witnesses um just taking that point a step further in Matthew 28, say, go therefore and teach them all the things I've commanded you, mm -hmm. except partake. You know, <laughs> why make an exception to tell them all or all the commands? And that's a command. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's sad. And there, it is, it, it, uh, the, maybe you were, you were the same then, reading between the lines, that the memorial was the strangest meeting of the year. Mm -hmm. You invited more people than you ever would to any other meeting. And when you came, you sat there thinking, they'll think this is weird. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, I always felt that this uh, disingenuous sort of come and come along and watch. Um, my my first meeting was a memorial meeting and oh. I ate, I ate the bread. So they teased me <laughs> afterwards and said I was half anointed. <laughs> <laughs> so now I can tell them I'm all the way anointed. All now. the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um 
he had one more question. How did you feel about the doctrine changing from time to time, the new light? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All the flip flops and all of this. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're listed partly on uh, readjw.info, but there are other websites that list these things of changing. Um, how did I feel about them? Um, I went along with it generally. Um, the hmm. Did you recognize them for what they were initially or? I disagreed with them. Or did you kind of mind. quickly put them up on the shelf and? <laughs> Yeah, I put. I'm, I'm thinking of instances now, but I don't need to go go there really because it would get too involved and digging into scripture. But the interpretation of certain parables in Matthew 13, I just couldn't make head and tail of that. And you know, and particularly if you're conducting the Watchtower meeting, and you disagree with it, and you're trying to feel comments and trying to turn them to Christ and. And knowing that you're you're faced with this dilemma of how do you teach or it's very difficult and i know a few elders in that situation and um hats off to them how they do it um i don't know how they continue to do it it must be a strain and a struggle so bless them and um that's why we're here really to support these ones who have to go undergo these dilemmas and we just want to offer support and encouragement scripture and prayer um and um i'm not plugging the grace fellowship group but you mentioned at the head of the discussion but if anyone feels they want to listen in sometime on a friday night seven o'clock uk time they're very welcome um but we're only a little family group <laughs> but it's a devotional it's a prayer meeting it's it's um we're going through the book of galatians at the moment so it's very moving Mm -hmm. and um, no one becomes the big cheese you know the big teacher we all <laughs> share that load and the sister getting sisters get involved as well so it, it's great okay and we got a question from uh david and vivian aspinall hi david and vivian hello guys jim what has given you your greatest joy since leaving jesus christ grace 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 everything well, jesus is grace Yes. basically <laughs> he, he is grace um it, it, he's it's a personification of grace so the greatest joy is him and the grace he uh, transmits and pervades but other than that um in can a you more, talk to us about your books that you've written you've oh, written right, two okay. books right yeah i've got them somewhere oh yeah under, under the pile <laughs> um yeah, I did the, the Lost in Grace was a, a, a very early attempt, uh, one year after this fellowship. It's a matter of a hundred devotions, very simple, well, thought provoking, I hope, on the idea of grace. Lost in wonder at his grace because people kept saying that they felt lost, those mm. that were coming out, and it kept resonating lost. But we should be lost in Christ, lost in grace. And that's where that, the latest one, which um, is this one space for grace is 366 devotions Hot off the press right yeah <laughs> um there was a colored version but this is this is um nice. black and white inside but it's fine and it's um almost like i'm going to say glorified examining the scriptures daily but that does, <laughs> i hope that doesn't do it justice it's the witnesses used to get into the habit of um reading some of them the day's text, the examining the scriptures daily. And I, I just thought to myself, wouldn't it be great? It, did, it developed into 12 themes, one a month, on the overall foundation of grace, um, just to help somebody. So starting January the 1st, somebody can tune in every day if they so choose. So that's available as well. So, yeah. And if you want to sample it, if you go to simplychristian.faith, and you do a search on tags, yeah. you'll see really big. It says space for grace because I would put them up every day. And yeah. I, I really enjoy them because you have a really great way of taking our JW experience and relating it to yeah. those things. And, and it wasn't in a harsh way. It was no. just, you know, okay, this kind of happened, but, but this is how it really is. Isn't that great? And they, they definitely left you with that, that warm, fuzzy feeling so well done on that i know that was a lot of hard work well it, 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 these things didn't set out to be books i didn't 
I didn't set out to become an author. It's just notes on my computer. And the great brother, Gary, he once suggested, why don't you make a book? I said, fool me, no way. And that's how it worked out with his support and with um, a number of, of supports, uh, our mutual friend, certainly, and um, Dragon, and also Paul and Beryl and Sally, and a few others have, have really helped me through this process. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been quite a journey. So now we have things in place that might help uh, the brothers and sisters. I was going to say something else I've forgotten. Well, the, the, a lot of people in the chat want to know, where do you go to church now? Like, what are your beliefs now? Oh, okay. Uh, I label myself as a non-denominational Christian, but really I, I label myself as a follower of Christ, but um, or in Christ is a better um, nomenclature. So um, I have been through various ways um linked to a couple of different churches i'm not a member of none at the moment i mean i'm a work in progress aren't we all so where the lord wants to lead us i'm willing to go uh, but i would say this that um can, can, can i just just interject here about helping jw's or helping pimos what's going to help them yes. I'm giving, giving this a little bit more thought and i'm going off the question a little bit um so the the simple answer to the, that question is i'm no fixed member of a particular church but i've been to pentecostal church that was through me that the first church i ever went to was a nigerian and they were dancing and singing to the lord and they asked me to do the final prayer they, they mistook me for a pastor for various reasons and <laughs> um you know i said i felt like a mr bean you know down dancing anyway <laughs> but it really did me good because it took me out of my comfort zone about six months after uh leaving being thrown out and it sort of whoa if i can go there and enjoy the fellowship with nigerians you know uh, i was only one of two europeans there of about 40. i can fit in anywhere and so with the mission to seafarers i've been involved with attending their church services sometimes and a local great guy uh, julian i hope you don't mind me mentioning your name uh, he's uh, an evangelist and i, I join with him um, i've done a bit of street evangelizing too just on occasion there's no pressure for me to do it it's what i want to do um so it's not just helping jw's and pmos it's helping people to christ and uh, i'm on a journey you know um so i'm not i'm no great shakes i made a lot of blobs and um what i believe now may change in time undoubtedly it will yeah and the other side it will so just to help the pmos um tlc okay i was thinking i started making a list and uh, recently of all the different things that might help pmos and there's certain things on the rejw site that um i've just got it up on the monitor here um under fading and from the eldest textbook section 25 bullet point 15 if an inactive one has made it clear that he does not want to be contacted by the congregation his wishes should be respected and that's in print so that should be respected i know it isn't but they've mm -hmm. got that I quoted that to one brother. He <laughs> he said, bless him, to the elders who were on his back. He quoted this. And they said, where did you get that from? From your elders' textbook. I know, but who told you that? And he said, a circuit overseer called Brother Field told me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, anyway, that's a, this is the humor of it all. But what really would help the, the TLC is um, to talk, number one, to talk talk in prayer to the father and to the son if you wish mm -hmm. um talk to friends who understand even it might be one or two just you only need one or two close friends to pour out how you really feel because you've been hemmed in for so long and bottled you up and just have one or two friends you can offload under is is such a, a relief um now maybe talk to a counselor that may well be necessary but remember that Jesus is in Isaiah is called our wonderful counselor. So mm -hmm. don't rule him out as the principal counselor, even if we turn to a human counselor, which 
it might be necessary to do so and advisable in some cases uh, the l for listen listen when we pray um listen to the bible when it speaks in the book of romans galatians and other key passages you know first john did it for me listen oh this is a really valid point listen to other pastors now i'm not going to name names because they do a fantastic work and you know uh, those listening know who we mean they're uh, former former jw's and they have marvelous channels um and they're often looking back and the suffering and we need that really do it's invaluable but there are other pastors christian pastors now whether you go to andrew farley john piper read watchman knee um just pulling these out of a hat really you have a lot of them listed in your art in your bio uh, or oh yeah. do i yeah on um, burian pickets yeah but why not listen to some christian stuff that's been unaffected by JWs, right? That really helps, but you don't. You need to be very selective. And the big rider to this, uh, Laurie, is do not follow men. It's yes. so important that we elevate one of those I've named or others that we could name, either former witnesses or not, and we start believing every word they say, and we sort of grovel at their feet and they can't do it, say a word wrong. Mm -hmm. We have our individual conscience, our spirit with God's spirit, and we should listen to him, mm -hmm. not listen to men. And the worst person you can listen to is yourself. <laughs> In other words, we become opinionated. We follow ourselves and suddenly we become dogmatic. We become, well, you listen to me, I I'll prove you right. And the test is, when we listen to a, a contrary viewpoint, we're immediately backing up three arguments why this brother or sister are wrong. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, hang on a minute, should I be doing that? Shouldn't we be tolerant of it? Grace is broad, love is broad. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus went out to people. And I mean, the rubbish he listened to and the people that he listened to, yeah, he loved them all unconditionally. So as long as we leave, believe in the First Corinthians 15 pattern, you know, Jesus, the crucial message, First Peter 3.18. And so I'm, I'm wrapping off the scriptures now. But in other words, the, the Christian message, that's fine and that's central. But beyond that, there's room for maneuver and room for tolerance and love. So mm -hmm. please do not follow any man. Or because in the end you become institutionalized mm -hmm. either to one man or a mini group. So it's the Lord and you in the, at the end of the day, isn't it? So that's listening. And the last one is C, which naturally stands for Christ. TLC, tender loving care. <laughs> Talk, listen, focus on Christ. And the way Christ operated was other people it was always others with christ so as we focus on christ and absorb his spirit inevitably we'll reach out to love people you you've got you should have a, a, they can't help it you can't help loving people whoever they are mm -hmm. whatever gender nationality sex whatever they are uh, you would reach out to them so that's for pimos um i did have I'm looking at the time. A final text. Okay. I'd love to read. And it's well known, but I'll read it from the Message Bible. And it's Matthew 11. Um, hmm. Okay. So from verse 27 or thereabouts. Um, no one knows the Son the way the Father does, nor the Father the way the Son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself, said Jesus. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make a, take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. 
let this is a great phrase learn the unforced rhythms of grace let me read that again learn the unforced rhythms of grace i won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly isn't that wonderful wonderful yeah yeah and i just thought it summarizes where we are really uh walking in the unforced we're so used to the the forced rhythm of legalism and to mm -hmm. make that transition we need to give ourselves time don't we yes and be patient with ourselves and each other and mm -hmm. uh, we're going to blunder along fall and flat on our face but jesus is there to pick us up um and we get disillusioned and frustrated with ourselves and we compare ourselves with another brother or sister how come they they can quote scripture okay or some other skill or speak so well they've got a problem the brother who can pluck scriptures out of the air and can speak well has a problem because that might make him look to himself and his skill set rather than christ mm. you do i think there's a, a scripture second corinthians 11 is that that people may see evidence of christ speaking through me one translation says that's mm -hmm. it it's not you it's what he has done and is doing um i'll, I'll stop giving the sermon we now. want to be that reflection that's it yeah yeah it, in fact it, it goes deeper yes yeah, reflection is one word you know we, we're so used to saying we should imitate christ and that is a good word to use a better word would be reproduce he reproduces himself in us after all we're born again so mm -hmm. he reproduces himself it's not just that we copy him he makes a copy of himself active through us it's a bit deeper than walking in his footsteps although we should the only way we can walk in his footsteps is if he carries us really and if he lives in us yeah very good now there were um some questions we didn't get to more on a deeper doctrinal kind of nature is yeah. there a good way for people to reach you to um ask you more questions yeah you can come to hull if you like um oh, i see <laughs> um yeah my email um fielder hull at gmail.com so fielder is my surname fielder hull all one word h-u-l-l -L? that's where i live so fielder hull at gmail.com all right i'm going to put that in the chat so mm -hmm. for um anyone who didn't get their questions answered you can reach out to uh jim there also if you go to simplychristian.faith and click on calendar you'll see his bible study listed there with instructions on um mm -hmm. how to maybe participate in that mm -hmm. and um so i think on that note i'm going to end it here thank you so much jim i really enjoy um listening to you i i'm confident that when you were an elder in the halls you were probably one of the favorite ones <laughs> maybe uh, no, not no, among no. the other elders but among not the among other elders no no <laughs> <laughs> well no. thank you very much and um well, I, I pray for your continued work and blessings helping our new ones coming out okay thank you and um um romans 9 1 to 5 it, it it's brilliant <laughs> I see I'm falling into that trap again. It's it, it's where Paul gave his testimony and then he he said love and then finally he listed the reasons why the Jews were a proud people and he said yes but you're missing Christ. And that's how we deal with Jehovah's Witnesses. We give our own testimony. Yeah. And that stumps them because you're speaking from the heart. Secondly, you talk about the atmosphere of love for them and thirdly you say well, look, you preach. Don't you do well in preaching, but are you preaching Christ? Look, you study the Bible. That's brilliant. But what's the Bible all about? It's about Christ. Yes, you have a worldwide fellowship, but have you got fellowship with Christ? The missing element is always Christ. And so Romans 9, 1 to 5 just encapsulates how to help Jehovah's Witnesses, really. From, that's how I see it anyway. Yeah. Okay, enough said. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. We'll have to maybe do a part two. I have a feeling we could probably get a, a lot more <laughs> out of you to, to help us. So, but okay. thank you, Jim, and have a good evening, and we'll be seeing you around. Okay, thank you. All yes. right, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.